Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm taking a look at my 29th update video. That's where I go back to 10 past products in order and take a look at how the original video went and let you know if anything's changed since then. So without further delay, let's get right to update number 29. My 281st product review was this water-filled pillow. It supposedly works a little bit like a water bed. You put water in there and you can adjust the thickness that way. Let's first take a look at the original review and see how that went. So today I'm checking out the water pillow by Metaflow. Oh, this is gonna take a minute. All right, perfect, three liters. Now while continuing to hold it, put the cap on. Oh wow, it's like it, it, is, it is moving around. First impressions. If I do this, I hear water sloshing around like they say, but I don't think you're really supposed to do this. It's different. I can feel the pillow part. I don't really feel the water so much. If I shake it, I can hear the water. But when you're laying on it, you don't hear the water at all. I put three liters in. I'm gonna take a liter out to make it two liters, which is what they say is the soft setting. Oh, it's working. It's working. I was expecting that it was gonna be basically water on the inside, but it's basically pillow on top and water on the bottom. If you had problems with regular pillows, this might be something to consider because it is different. When you put your head on there and you can, it kind of moves the water around. It's a, it's a different sensation. So this might be something to consider if you've had problems with standard pillows. All right, so this got about six months of solid use from my daughter who loved it. But then we did our five-way pillow comparison and she found one she liked a little bit more. But this is still filled with the original water. Let me see how that water looks after sitting this for a year. This has not been opened since mid-2020. This could be ugly. We'll see. Here we go. Here we go. I'm a little nervous about this. Is it going to be white or brown? We shall see. Oh, it's still, it's still clear. That's a bit of a relief, actually. Let me smell it. It just kind of has a plasticky smell. It doesn't smell like something's growing in there. Hopefully nothing is. Well, I mean, that answers that question. A year later, the water isn't completely green and filled with all kinds of nasties, uh, so that's good. The pillow is really nice. It got a lot of use. I think that it's something that is worth trying. It wasn't for me. My daughter liked it a lot, so your mileage will certainly vary. Number 282 was an interesting collection of five odd kitchen gadgets. Let's first take a look at how the original video went. The zip slicer. I mean, I just threw a bunch in there. I didn't really spend much time trying to get them perfect. Look how perfect the picture shows. I don't have grapes that big. Hiya. The good news and the bad news is that a lot of people said that they were not cut evenly and I, and I can see that. You know, they don't exactly fall out like they show in the picture. Take a look. These are actually pretty good. If you've got larger grape tomatoes or larger grapes, it's going to work pretty good. If, you, if they're smaller, you might have problems with it. Poach pods. These are little silicone floating cups that allow you to poach your eggs pretty easily. All you have to do is boil some water, oil or spray the inside of the poach pod. When the water's boiling, you put an egg in here, you put it in the pot, cover it for five minutes, and you're good. And there's what we got. That doesn't look too bad, does it? It looks poached. I think it looks pretty poached. Next up is the Unilid by Copper Chef. And this is a three pack of stretchable lids. It can cover bowls, pots, cans, a variety of things. And let me see here. Oh yeah, that, that actually works. Oh, oh look at this. I'm surprised more than anything. That actually worked. Putting this on seems like it's gonna be a bit of a learning curve. I don't feel like I have it down yet. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They say you can use any size bowl. How about a square one? All right, that's definitely not gonna be airtight because I can t I can tell that it's got some openings here, but it, we, it would probably work just as well as Saran Wrap would. This is an as seen on TV product called the Chef Wizard. The key feature of this is it has a lever that allows you to switch from basically like a spatula to a pair of tongs pretty easily. They say you can also use it as a whisk or as a slotted spoon or as a salad server. It seems like it'd be better for tongs like that. That's much better. Wow, I think this might be my go-to pierogi flipper after this. When it came time to flipping something a little bit heavier, like a chicken breast, that's where the chef wizard was not such a wizard after all. The last item is a very basic item. It's just a eight slot utensil rest that I bought for 10 bucks at Bed Bath & Beyond. There is eight. I'm not sure how realistic that is. 
All right, I get seven in there. The spatula is just too big. So of this bunch, the one I actually use the most surprisingly has been the Chef Wizard. I don't use it for a lot of things. I usually use it when I'm flipping pierogies. It's good for that because it has this kind of wide design to it. It's not very good at flipping heavy objects and it's not good for flipping pancakes, but for some things it actually works pretty well. This is the swapped cleaning system. It is a handle that has detachable heads, so you can have multiple attachments with one handle. Here's some scenes from the original video. You've got all these attachments and a handle for 70 bucks. It's pretty simple. It feels pretty sturdy too. This particular combination feels quite sturdy. It's like you just snap it in like this. Very simple, very easy. Oh yeah, that, oh, oh. This one's a lot smaller than the other ones. Here we go. Well, as with everything else, it feels like a standard broom. Like everything else, it works exactly like I expected it to. Now you can hang them just like that. The handle choices, you have 60 and 48 inches. The 60 inch, when you put it on the end of a corn broom, it's like seven feet tall. But you need a longer handle for the push broom, so you, you might need two handles no matter what. Which defeats the purpose just a little bit. I think it's well conceived, I think it's well priced, I think the swap cleaning system works pretty well. We had kind of a heavy monsoon season this year. We had a big rain last night. Kicked a bunch of dirt and rocks up on this patio. Using my swap to get rid of it. See, Bailey's very interested too. I will say I, I don't really use the... Uh, the indoor attachments, I just I only use really this push brush. And the reason being is because indoors, this handle is just too long. Although it's great for outdoors. So after one year of being outdoors the entire time, the handle actually still held up quite well. Attachments obviously been used a lot, which is, is the idea, but I was worried it was gonna not hold up over time out in the elements because it gets so hot here, but so far so good. So in the end, even though I, I think that it worked well, the handles held up out in the elements after a year in the summertime in Vegas, the fact that I never really used the other attachments made this a, a kind of an expensive push broom. Works quite well, but if you're not gonna take advantage of the features, it may not be worth it. Next up was a collection of secret safes where you can stash your cash. Let's first take a look at how the original video went. I put three bills in there, it seems kind of tight. It doesn't even completely close all the way. Oh, come on now. What legal thing am I supposed to hide in here? I mean, it looks like a kind of a standard dollar store hairbrush. Not a lot of space in there. Let me see what I can fit. Obviously, no passport. Obviously, no credit card. A regular key. Well, that does fit in there. I've got a total of 16 bills here. Let me see if I can fit them in there. Roll that up tight. And there it goes. Even with the, the 16 bills in there, it doesn't feel lopsided or heavy on one side, so I think it works. And there it is. Credit card isn't gonna work. Some uh, some silver coins or some gold coins will work. It does fit. Can I fit the cash and the key and the coins? Yeah, I can fit all this in here. So if I open this cabinet and just put this down here, I don't think anybody would really notice. The secret safe clock. I mean, is it me or is that kind of a little bit obvious? There's no real like combination or secret. It just folds forward. All right, so this one will definitely hold my passport and credit cards, my valuable jewelry, and a de decent amount of cash. I mean, it's far from being full. My question is, would you guys think to open this up? I, I kind of think I might. But the telltale sign is the bottom. There you go, the trap door. All right, hey, I fit everything in the spam container too. It looks ordinary. It doesn't sound ordinary. Real stuff. And there it is. But it does have a weight to it. It feels, it feels like a half empty peanut butter jar. And oh yeah, it fits. Yeah, it holds a decent amount. Oh yeah, I fit everything in there. Is that a real book? It's gotta be a real book, right? That looks like a real book. Let's open it up. Oh, there we go. Look. Real pages. Looks like it's almost made for a passport, exact width. A key, a bunch of fake silver, a very high, high limit credit card, and some high denomination cash here. I mean, you don't wanna shake it around. Kinda of hear it a little bit. I think the book worked out well. 
So I've actually continued to use most of these safes, not all of them. The uh, the clock, because it's out in the open and it's so easy to get to, I don't really have anything valuable in there. I've only had to change the battery once in a year, so the clock portion works pretty well. I do have a few things in the Barbasol can, nothing really new to report as far as that goes. Funny story about the peanut butter jar is I actually had one of my son's friends come in and ask if he'd make himself a peanut butter sandwich and he was holding this jar. So this is probably not a good idea to have in your cabinets when you have company over if you have valuables in there because they might have stumble across it. And my favorite of the bunch was the book and I'd say it's still my favorite. I got a few things in there that I want to kind of keep safe. That was definitely a fun collection of safes and most of them have held up quite well. Number 285 was the Instahang, an SC on TV corner shelf that was heavily advertised earlier in 2020. Let's first take a look at how the original review went. These are very rubbery feeling, which I guess would probably bode well for it sticking. Here's a handle you snap it in place with. All right, that's the best I can do. I'm gonna let this sit for like an hour and come back and see if it's still there. All right, well, after, uh, after three minutes it fell. All right, I'm putting it back up here. Last time it was only a couple minutes. I got my camera rolling this time. Oh, didn't last three minutes. Ah, it's back. It actually feels less secure now that it's all the way back. I'm gonna wait right here because I have a feeling it's gonna fall. Will it last longer pushed all the way back? It doesn't feel like it's as sturdy, but we'll see. Oh, well, it's consistent at least. I think it's about how long it lasted last time. It's actually made it to the one hour mark. I'm a little bit surprised. Let's see if that makes any difference in the uh, in how long it holds. One hour, 11 minutes, and about eight minutes after the water went on there, gone. It fell. My end the hang broke when it fell in the shower. So I, that concludes my test because I can't really do anything else. Insta hang is an utter failure, and I don't I don't really have anything great to say about it. So I don't have my Instahang here because it broke. That, those series of tests did not do well for the Instahang, which doesn't really matter because it was not a very good product to begin with. This one made number four of my worst of 2020. I was never a fan. I probably wasn't going to use it even if it did hold up. Uh, and you'll notice it's not advertising that much anymore. I think that's because consumer reviews are so bad for it. The Instahang did not do well in my tests. Number 286 is the Egg Pod. This is an ASEAN on TV product that was going around in 2020. Got a lot of requests for this one. Check out some scenes from the original review. You put four eggs in those indentions. You use this fill cup, which the fill line is right there at the top. Put four eggs in there. Put the lid back on. Nine minutes. All right, it's done. Now we have two minutes to wait before I take it out of the microwave. And here we go. Place in the sink and carefully remove the top. Run under cold water for two minutes. Hold the unit by its handles and shake vigorously up and down. Nine, ten. And this one doesn't look like it got cracked at all. Let me do some more shakes. That might have been too much shaking. Wow. I mean, I had pretty low expectations for this, but so far these first couple that I peeled exceeded those low expectations at least. I have to admit this is not one that I used after my review is over. I really never wanted to reach for it. I've made eggs since then. I haven't had a lot of feedback from people about this item either, so I don't think it really sold a lot. It doesn't seem like a lot of people are really using it. So it was an interesting gadget, but not something I found very useful. Number 287 was a collection of cereal gadgets. Kind of an interesting bunch of products. Let's first take a look at how the original video went. It is pretty cheap plastic, but it was only 25 bucks. It does seem like this could be a, just a hair taller. Well, the cereal looks like it's still pretty much intact. Here are the components of the crunch cup. I've disassembled it. Looks like it holds exactly one cup of cereal. Mm. I was thinking that was too much milk. Now I'm starting to think it wasn't enough. Every time I consume some, I feel like I'm getting a little bit better each time. The O-Bowl. Never eat soggy cereal again. This side is higher than that side and it's angled downward so the cereal automatically falls that way. Nudge over the cereal you want into the milk portion. 
your cereal never really gets soggy if it's not touching the milk until you're about to put it in your spoon. I think people that don't like soggy cereal would love something like this. Magic bag sealer. I right, fold it over, and just slide it over. Boom. It's, it's stable. This is not going anywhere. This one has lived up and probably exceeded my expectations. Let's take a look at this cereal on the go cup. You're supposed to keep your milk in the bottom cup and your cereal in the top cup. Is this waterproof? It seems like it is, yeah. It's not leaking. All right, so I think the cereal on the go cup does work. So actually the one that I use the most out of these is a cereal dispenser, which gets used pretty regularly. Let me go in the kitchen and show you how that's holding up. So here it is still being used. I've got a couple different cereals in here. Whenever we go through cereal phases, we fill this up. The only thing I really have to add from my original view is this definitely has to be cleaned more often. I mean, you can see it's already got some, uh, some crumbs in there and I actually just cleaned this a couple days ago. I take these completely out and I just run them under the sink. Underneath here, it does collect cereal crumbs so it's not really a problem but i've actually been quite happy with it and uh, i continue to use it i should also point out that last summer i was organizing the boneyard with my son and i found the obol in a box and it had a giant spider in there that crawled in and couldn't get out so the obol maybe could double as a spider catcher but overall i think that the cereal dispenser was the one i ended up using the most Number 288 with the slushy cups. These are the cups you put in the freezer, add liquid, and you get a nice frozen treat after a few minutes. Here's some scenes from how the original review went. What you're supposed to do in this one is freeze it, fill it with liquid, and then squeeze. The slush and shake is a very different design. This actually has two sections. This one doesn't have a lid, but this one does. And this one doesn't require you to squeeze it. Between the two of them, really the only thing to know is that you have to use naturally sweetened drinks. I found some soy chocolate milk that nobody's drinking, so I need to get rid of it. So this will be a good chance for it. That's about one cup of liquid. It kind of looks like mud coming up through a, through a hole in the ground or something. Wow. Wow. All right, they both hold exactly one cup. There's definitely a, a, a texture that's forming on the walls. Oh, wow, I can definitely feel it forming now. That's the consistency I like. I guess if you let it sit longer, it would even be more icy, but... Mmm. It still seems like it's forming ice on the sides, even as I'm eating it, though. I'm not feeling any ice at all on this one. And this one feels like it's done. I'm getting ice in here now. Some ice has started forming at the five minute mark. This one will let it set for a minute or two, and this one I'm gonna start squeezing. I think this one looks done. Before the four minute mark. And the uh, slush and shake, we're just getting some ice now. When I wasn't timing them, I didn't notice a huge difference, but when I timed them, the frozen magic slaughtered it. I wanna say I used these about four times, maybe after the original review was done. I once every few weeks for the rest of the summer. This summer, I haven't really decided to pull it out. It's definitely something that some people would probably find a lot of use for. People like me didn't really find much use for it, but it does work. Oh, I did put some diet soda in there to see what happened. It did not create a slushy treat out of diet soda. They said it would, and I wanted to see what happened. It doesn't work. It's a fun item for kids. I don't think a lot of adults are going to use something like this. I didn't really find a lot of use for it. Although I will say, it does work. Number 289 is the Prep Solutions S'mores Maker. It's an interesting gadget that makes s'mores in the microwave. Check out some scenes from the original review. It almost looks like some weird, like, 30s cartoon character toy. All right, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do two. All right, then a marshmallow and another graham cracker. Lower the arms to the s'mores so the hands are flat. Microwave 30 seconds and it should be done. This is the before picture. 30 seconds, we get the after. And, so, oh wow. Well, but taking a closer look here, I mean, I think it did a pretty good job. Are right, the instructions say Ritz cracker, cheese. Maybe I'll just put the peanut butter right on the Ritz. Oh no, <laughs> whoa. Wow, that's a disaster. Oh, come on now. It's amazing that it works so well with the s'more. Look at this, I can't eat that. That is a culinary masterpiece right there. What do you guys think? Now, how often you use this is gonna be dictated by how often you make s'mores. I don't make them very often. I did make them, I think, once in the wintertime and I pulled it out and it worked fine. 
Not something I really use a lot. It's not something I make very often. I was happy that it worked well. I did get one use out of it over the winter. I'm not sure it's something worth investing in for someone like me who doesn't make s'mores that often. If you make them often, it does work quite well. My 290th product review was the Granite Stone Pro. This made number seven of my best of 2020. Let's first take a look at how the original video went. Now, I would hope on the first use that this would be a stellar example of nonstick cooking. With no butter oil, look at that. Slides around the pan. I think what I'm gonna do now is let this cool off a little bit, hopefully stick to the pan. Well, try to get to stick to the pan and see what happens. Oh yeah, came right off. Oh, wow, look, it's not sticking. Whoa. Oh, yeah, look at that. whoa. I'm gonna melt these caramels and let them sit for 24 hours. Oh, oh, it just came up. Did you see that? It came right off. Oh, it's sticky too. Wow. Oh, wow. Whoa, didn't even stick to it. Look at that. We've started the granite stone looking good. Red copper pan, so far so good. Granite stone lifts right off. Red copper pan, it's, it's, it's feeling a little sticky, but, it's, but it is coming off. I think as long as you season it, as long as you take care of it like you would any nonstick pan, I think you're gonna like the Pro Series of the Granite Stone. For those of you who've watched my channel much, I actually compared this to the Ninja Never Stick Pan a few months back, so there's kind of an update as far as that goes. I'll show you a close up, but it really looks no worse for wear. It still held up great. After a year of pretty significant use, it, Looks no worse for wear. Uh, the bottom's got a few scratches here and there, but really normal wear and tear is not bad for a year. Uh, no major complaints. It looks, uh, looks pretty good on the inside. So, so far, a year later, the Granite Stone Pro has held up quite well. So this was a pretty good batch of products. The water pillow got about six good months of use. I think it's a good product. The Chef Wizard, the Swapped, and the Cereal Dispenser all get occasional use, and they're also holding up quite well. The safes aren't something that I use actively, but they are in use passively most of the time. And the Granite Stone Pro gets regular use, probably my favorite of the bunch, and it's held up very well since then. Well, that's it. I'll be back another month or two with my next update video. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.